First off is uh, Mallory Crow. She began her career, or she began working on ODOT's winter maintenance projects under Dr. Snyder uh, during her senior year of her undergraduate degree in civil engineering at the University of Akron. She spent her entire winter at an ODOT garage riding in plow trucks, gathering data for the evaluation of EPOC bulk spreader. During this project, she was offered a chance to work on additional ODOT projects while acquiring her master's degree in civil engineering and has since continued on for her PhD. She has worked on multiple ODOT research projects, including the evaluation of EPOC bulk spreader for winter maintenance, the evaluation of the Viking Seves tow plow for winter maintenance, EPOC uh, op, uh, implementation study, plow blade op optimization, evaluation of GPS AVL for snow and ice operations resource management, assessment of salt procurement and distribution process, and the evaluation and analysis of liquid de-icers for winter maintenance. So with that, welcome Mallory Crow. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, so I worked on this project a couple years ago. It was a two year project where we uh, teamed up with ODOT and evaluated various different types of uh, plow blades that were out on the market. Um, so the overall objective was to determine um, some safe, efficient, cost effective methods for changing and what blades to use where, um, if that was um, an option in general as far as can you pick what blade goes into what area. Um, so it began with a survey, which we called all of an in-state survey where we called all of the counties within ODOT, did just a phone interview about their current practices. We also did lit review and contacted other DOTs to see if they have been implementing any kind of blades. If so, which ones, what did they like, what, did they, uh, what didn't they like. From there, we moved to a blade selection. So which blades are we going to test? And then where in the state do we want to test these blades? So the survey, um, since we're, you know, this, we're going to have discussion and in order to leave room, I'm not going to go through all the charts in detail. The final report is published on ODOT's uh, research page on their website, so you can find the full report. And if you have any other additional questions, you can always uh, contact me or Dr. Schneider. Uh, but anyway, here's a, the, the little 35 question survey. We covered uh, what kind of blade lengths are you using? Are you using covered? Are you stacking blades? Uh, what kind of materials? Did you try rubber at any point versus um, flame hardened steel versus steel? Uh, shoes, guards, trip edges, counterbalances, pavement types that are in your county. So just a variety of current practices so we can get an idea of what everyone's doing currently. So as you can see, it ranges throughout the state. I'm sure most states are pretty similar where everyone kind of has such different terrains, different kinds of road types, urban versus rural. So everything will just vary based on preferences and what kind of uh, areas they're plowing. So just a sample of the plow blade lengths. Most are doing partial, some are doing full, some are um, you know full and partial, uh, and then the counterbalance types throughout the state, whether it's hydraulic or manual or mechanical or both. Um, again, the plow shoes, plow guards, we also had to determine what our standard normal blade was. So that's why some of these questions were important to us. So what overall would be your standard blade that we want to compare these uh, specialty blades to? And then we also wanted to look at safety things for as far as changing blades, because if these blades last longer, then maybe it's safer because you're not changing, you're not lifting, you're not um, having to cut off bolts as, more, as frequently as you would with a blade that lasts longer. So we looked at lifting, we looked at what the safety concerns were for the managers at the garage when it comes to changing blades. And now I'll get into just how we collected the data for this analysis and just our project setting. So Ohio obviously has a wide range of average snowfall where you're down south where you can be less than 20 inches per year annually. Um, and then up north uh, in Ashtabula by the border of Pennsylvania with the lake effect where you could be close to 120 inches of snow per year. So we wanted to kind of get a wide range. So we were basically, all the green dots kind of represent, we wanted to get in multiple bands of average snowfall to get a better idea of what's going on. 
So these were the garages that we were at. So the table up top is just how we selected what blades we tested in which counties and which counterbalances. We wanted to match the counterbalances so that we would remove that factor to say, well, that was a hydraulic counterbalance. That's why that blade lasted longer versus spring. So if we tested two polar flexes, they were both either hydraulic or both either spring so that we didn't have to worry about that. Um, so that's how we kind of just table representing that. From the data from year one, the goal of year one was to move forward to year two, increase sample size, and we also tested different configurations for standard blades. So maybe, in, or so we did, you know, some counties down south were double stacking their blades. So we threw a couple of those samples in, collected data off that. Uh, we did a couple with no counterbalances to see how counterbalances actually affect blade wear. So uh, we, as, in addition to the specialty blades, we also tested different configurations with the standard blades. We installed DVR systems in the trucks that we were testing blades with. Uh, cameras that faced forward um, from the inside the cab facing forward so you could see the blade going up and down and there was GPS um, with the DVRs. We would periodically go out, switch out the DVRs, download the video, and then I had a bunch of undergrads sit there and break down plow blade video all winter long. <laughs> so <clears throat> they could map where they were, we could get what pavement type they were at, we could calculate what speed they were plowing at on average, and we can see how many miles actually were on that blade. Uh, we also had uh, mechanics or, and operators taking blade measurements periodically throughout the season. So at five different locations along the blade. So the results are, again, we looked, watched over probably 6,000 hours of video over the last two years. There were a couple of hard drives that failed with the really cold temperatures, trying to start those things up. Uh, but we overall had a 90% capture rate. And then we also had the measurement sheets and all this data we would go through. Um, we would have to, we could observe it by county, by blade type, by measurement location, by blade between each blade change. We um, did have some outliers, especially in the first year, you know, so we had to pull a couple of them out and couldn't include them in our analysis. And then we could group it by blade type and determine a wear per mile. Here's a sample of night video um, from the DVR. So you can see the latitude, longitude. It does give you a speed at that moment, but we just did an overall uh, speed based on distance and how long it took them. So that would be the, the side over, uh, the, the left side over here would be your plow down. This would, you can see the plows up. Again, we had them watching the video alongside with using ArcGIS, a spatial analysis program, where we could actually, we would create a layer for each event in each day, and we would actually draw where they plowed that day. And within that, where they plowed, you could add the data of time they started, time they ended, Ca then you can calculate speed. And we can also overlay this with uh, data for the pavement surface types and determine how many times they went over and f um, or how many miles of concrete, how many bridge joints they were exposed to, um, various things like that with this program. Uh, some of the summary data I'm not going to spend too much time with, but it's all in the report. And again, you can look at it as which counties, how many miles they plowed. You could look at it how, by how, what blade type and how many they plowed. Um, here's your, that was, this is your one data. Here's your two data. More, um, more plows are tested because we tested all the different configurations for the standard. Um, Overall, the speeds were pretty, this is average speeds. Speeds tended to stay pretty similar, um, which is one of the findings that we looked at was how does speed affect it. Um, all this summary data does go into a program to determine the significance. So well, how does speed affect blade wear? How does uh, concrete exp um, uh, affect blade wear? So all, of that, all this data does get put into um, a regression model to determine how it predicts blade wear. Um, again, here's some of the pavement and bridge joints. This is the one that you'll hear a lot of uh, 
people that in the garages that are like, no, that's not right. <laughs> they say concrete. According to our model, concrete did not affect blade wear. However, if you look at our data, we only had like one blade that was 25% of the time on concrete. So using that small sample, it's, it's not uncommon that we didn't see significance for concrete at this analysis. But most of the state is asphalt with very small segments or concrete. So that's, you know, it, the data is what the data is. So we can only do so much. Um, again, bridge joints. I know bridge joints is a weird one because it's an exposure to potentially break a blade. But I know it's a certain type of bridge joint. It's a certain angle. It all just depends. Um, but we thought it was interesting, so we included that data on how many bridge joints they went over. Just an exposure. Um, so when we look at the blade measurement results, we can look at it. We use this um, information to determine the blade wear, so how many inches per mile. So the top year one, you can see standard is a lot. Um, mind you, the scale is pretty small. Uh, so 0.001 to 0.009 is that scale on the y-axis for year one and year two. But you can see the standard blade is a lot higher than the carbide blade, tipped blade, the Yoma, the Polar Flex, and the XL Classic. Year two. Similar results, however, uh, the no counterbalance is the highest, so we did find that there was a use for a counterbalance. It does help decrease wear when using properly and it's, ca and it's calibrated properly. Um, we also did the carbide single, which was a little bit higher in year two, and the carbide double, a little bit lower. We did the double stack. We did a, a blade with a middle guard on it, a standard blade with a middle guard. And then we did the Polar Flex and XL. Basically, we moved forward from data one, and we only looked at Polar Flex and the XL for specialty blades in year two. Um, so some of the risks, there are obviously risks involved. If you're hot putting in a high capital cost, there's always potential for breakage. Uh, so here are some of the things that we encounter just over our study, over the small sample of blades that we were testing. Uh, we had a Yoma that lost a, a driver's side curbside guard on a barrier wall. Um, it, didn't, it didn't put the plow out of commission. We still ran it, but it happens. Uh, we had a polar flex hit an expansion joint. So that actually completely bent the middle section. And because the polar flex has the ability to change just the teeth for half the cost. However, if your teeth are already pretty worn, you can't just replace one or two because it's going to be lopsided. So we had to replace all of them. Um, and then, of course, right after that happened, they hit a, a monument box on the ground and bent it again. So <laughs> we also had a carbide break on a bridge joint. So um, those are some of the things that we encountered over the study. Uh, it's one of those things that you just have to consider when investing in these blades. Uh, so overall, the goal of this data was to get cost. So in order to do that, we look at our standard blade as our one to compare everything to. So we come up with the equivalent standard blade ratio, which is based on that wear per miles. So your carbide, your one was a 1.7 to one ratio. Therefore, it would take 1.7 standard blades to compete to be equal to one carbide blade. So that's kind of how you have to read it. Where you have Yoma at five standard blades to one Yoma, Polar Flex at 4.5. The standard's obviously one, and then the XL Classic at 6.6. .6. So using this data, we moved forward. Um, however, with the Yoma would have been, had a higher uh, ratio, but when you look at cost, the Polar Flex was better cost. So when we moved forward year two, through discussions with our technical panel and ODOT, we went forward with the Polar Flex and the XL Classic, and then all of the other configurations for the standard blade. Um, year two, we had similar results for pretty much all of them, a little bit higher for XL Classic, and then a big jump for the Polar Flex. But in year one, we did have a lot of issues with the Polar Flex getting, it was damaged a few times. So we're, we were comfortable and we were okay with the fact that it jumped to a 9.4. So when we take all this data and then we look at the capital cost and then the installation cost um, for each time you would have to change a standard blade to keep up with the specialty blade, 
labor hours and people needed. Um, putting those into uh, equations and we would run a model. Basically, we didn't just set it at one person or two people to change a blade. We would set it at maybe three people, well, whatever the data showed, but three people plus or minus one person. So we gave every, uh, um, every single variable a distribution. So it wasn't one fixed number, it was an average. Um, we should have that data here. So if we had a standard deviation, so some of the capital costs were the same, they were flat. We couldn't just make up a standard deviation, but some of the other data we could. Um, just like standard blade cost, it's gonna vary from year to year. We had a couple years of data. So we found what the average cost was, plus or minus. So it had a distribution, hours, number of people, the blade equivalency, we added a 0.5 because of the multiple years. And that way we would rerun the model bunches and bunches of time. Here's your two variables for cost. Um, we would run it multiple, multiple times so you wouldn't get one fixed number. This is your savings you get. This is your average savings plus or minus based on these distributions. So when we look at the actual cost savings in year one, the carbide single blade, one carbide single blade implemented instead of a standard blade was $80. Yoma was negative 700. Polar Flex was negative 80. But like I said, we decided to give it another shot because of the ones that were damaged. Standard obviously would be zero. And the XL Classic was the 534. So when we look at year two data only, the carbide single at negative 29, carbide double 145, double stack 278, middle guard 375, no counterbalance negative 107, polar flex 2500, standard zero, XL 1125. Uh, and then what we did was any blade that I tested in year one and year two, I combined that data from the raw point, I didn't just average and average and we looked at what the overall savings over the two years would have been using all the data. So um, probably a little bit more reasonable, Polar Flex at 778 and the XL Classic at 426, um, and then the Carbide Single at negative 29. And the bottom chart here shows the rankings for year one, year two, and then the combined of the two years. So um, overall we found some blades not worth the cost. Some showed potential to show savings. Uh, again, you get into the issue of you're investing a lot more money and then if they go out and in the first 10 miles of plowing they break it, you're out a lot more money. So you kind of have to, as a manager, um, evaluate your routes, evaluate your operators, making sure your counterbalances are calibrated um, there's a lot of steps before that you, you should consider before implementing specialty blades. Uh, that's all I have. So again, all the stuff is in the report if you have more, if you want to look at more details. So thank you. <laughs>